this episode was everything and we finally get the showdown between Damon and Ricky. Let's talk about Pose. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to KRS-TV. This is your boy, Kenny, and this is Pose Season 2, Episode 5, and the name of this episode is What Would Candy Do? This episode was really good, and before I get started, let me give my congratulations to the cast and crew of Pose for earning six Emmy nominations. Uh, shout out to Billy Porter. He got nominated for Best Actor in a Leading Role. Um, the series itself has been nominated for Best Dramatic Series. And um, they've also got, you know, four um, nominations in the technical side, you know, for hair, makeup, um, for Best Cast. So shout out to Ryan Murphy. Um, you know, everybody that's involved with Pose. I mean, this is huge. I mean, this is a show that is based on the LGBTQ community, and they are winning big, and I wish them all luck. And I'm just really excited because I've been a fan of this show since the very first episode. When they dropped that beat to Tanya Gardner's heartbeat, they had me hooked at that moment because <laughs> I'm like, this show is going to be a phenomenon. And we see that they've already been approved for a third season and they've gotten six Emmy nominations. So I am completely excited and I'm going to be rooting for Pose, you know, coming up for the Emmy. So I am so looking forward to this. So let me begin with this review. Um, we, um, the episode opens up, you know, pretty much... The news is covering this new dance craze, which is Vogue. And, you know, um, it's the dance craze of the 90s. And Madonna's song is, you know, has spent third, you know, its third week on the charts. And we see that this reporter is outside the YMCA where people are lining up to take lessons. Um, um, you know, take lessons on how to, on how to Vogue. And we remember, you know, Damon, after he broke up with, um, after he broke up with Ricky, he started, you know, teaching, you know, dance at, um, at the YMCA. And we see that, um, while he's there, um, one of the ladies says, can you add on, um, an extra class, you know, for this week and everything. Um, so, and he agrees to, cause, um, and pretty much seeing, you know, Damon in this light, was very reminiscent of Willie Ninja. If you actually watch the documentary Paris is Burning, Willie Ninja was one of the pioneers of Vogue. And he was a natural dancer and he would teach, you know, classes at the piers, you know, by um, down Christopher Street. And, you know, he also was a part of the House of Ninja. And the House of Ninja were Vogue assassins, like literally Vogue assassins. And, you know, seeing Damon in this light definitely reminded me, like, they're kind of paying homage to Willie Ninja because he was a great teacher and a great instructor. And we see that Damon is doing the class. All the women want to get at him. You know, there's one girl, like this big girl, she was just so excited that he brought her to the front of the class and he's teaching her Vogue and everything. And after the class, there's a woman that comes up to him and he can definitely tell us her first time, um, but she immediately tells him that she's not a dancer, she's a scout, and she wants him, you know, to audition, and she's going to put him in the front of the line because she loves his technique, and it's for Madonna's Blonde Ambition Tour. You know, that's the tour, y'all. That's the tour where the documentary Truth or Dare was based on, you know, was after Vogue became a phenomenon, and... You know, the Blonde Ambition Tour was probably one of her biggest tours of her career. And it was, it was a phenomenon. So, we can definitely see that after this, Damon hollers and he screams because Damon has arrived. So, so then we see back at the house of Evangelista, you know... You know, Blanca was like, this is our year, you know, angels doing modeling, 
and Damon is about to, and then Damon, you know, about to do some stuff with motherfucking Donna. Are we serious? Like, Blanca is just filled with excitement for her children. And then Poppy is like, yeah. And just like I'm managing, um, like I'm managing Angel, I can manage you too, Damien. You could be my second client. Damien looking at him like, <laughs> I was like, y'all gonna stop shitting on Poppy because Poppy definitely got something to contribute as well. Um, and um, pretty much his audition is gonna be um, Saturday at 9, you know. So, pretty much what you got going on here is that not only has Damon been selected to audition, we go to the house of Wintour. Ricky has also been pulled to audition because he met. Um, you know, he met a dancer at Taylor at um, Taylor Dane's tour, so he's been dancing with Taylor Dane. Um, that while you know, while he was pretty much dancing on this tour, he met a talent scout, and they said they're gonna move him to the front of the line. The same verbiage that was used with Damon, um, and we literally see in this scene between the House of Evangelista and the House of Wintour two different mothering styles. You got the mothering styles of Blanca and the mothering styles of Electra, and they're completely worlds apart. You know, we see that um, Blanca is happy, and she's like, I'm very proud of you, son. I'm, I'm really excited. And then you got Blanca's like, darling, I am completely proud of myself that I'm able to provide opportunities for my children. And she tells Ricky, oh, yes. And you definitely better let them know that it was, you definitely better mention me once you get in, Damon. I mean, once you get in, Ricky. I didn't mean to say Damon. I meant to say Ricky. And she's like, oh, yes, Ricky, make sure you mention me if you get picked. Because you, because this is the year for the House of Wintour. And then, um, I forgot the girl that, um, she's really pretty. Um, I think her name was Milan, I think. But she was like, you know, I always always used to dream that me and Madonna were best friends and that damn Electra was like please Madonna would not be desperately seeking a relationship with you peasants I was like no she not gonna make a play on desperately seeking Susan I'm like El Electra is a bitch I was so cracking up but then she was like oh but um <clears throat> but then they both pretty much said that look we need to get you guys ready for the audition so you know um you know we see that Blanca's like yes I need all of you to get together to kind of like work Damon enough for this audition because this is an audition that's important for all of us not just for us but for our community which is real and then you got Electra's like look um I don't do hugs I don't do kisses and I don't, I don't coddle, but what I do do is I'm a provider. So she provides all these stacks and like, yes, make sure that Ricky is ready for this audition and um, I'm not lifting a finger. So we see that they are, that the House of Evangelista is working with Damon and the House of Wintour is working with Ricky. This shit was very reminiscent to like Rocky IV where, you know, uh, Rocky was being prepared like, you know, the old fashioned way using nature while Drago was using all this high tech stuff, you know, to do his training. It was kind of similar where Ricky is getting big money spent on him. He's getting, you know, hot towel treatment and he's getting, you know, tailored for an outfit. Whereas the um, Damon, you know, He's pretty much doing everything from scratch, you know. He's pretty much got his hair cut by Poppy. Poppy's working on him as far as his physique. And, you know, Blanca's waxing him and all that. So, they're doing everything, you know, old-fashioned because, you know, they don't have that kind of money to do all that. So, they work with what they got. But both of them are turning out and everything. They're all excited. Um, and... And then all of a sudden, we we see that um, that they're both in a good place. Well, we see that the both of them are just are ready. You know, they're ready for this audition. And and then um, we also see um, before all this went down, 
we actually saw that there was a scene between Blanca and, and um, Damon where she pretty much, you know, they pretty much talk about Ricky. And he was saying, and she was asking, have you seen Ricky lately? And she was like, and he was like, nah, I've only seen him at a balls a few here and there. But when I try to talk to him, he tried to avoid me. And it's like, how can you just be over somebody so easily who you claim to love? And Blanca's like, he ain't over you, child. He's just trying to hide it. And it is what it is. So then we see on the House of Wintour, you know, she is like, yes, my work is complete. You look great. And she's like, but while we're on it, do you still hold a torch in your heart for Damon? And he was like, nah, that's ancient history. She was like, good, because I want you to leave Damon crying and make him run back to that brick of a mother of his. And then she said, oh, by the way, if you don't get on this tour, don't bother returning. I'm like, oh, you vicious ass. Like, you literally are trying to come off off of Ricky. And if he don't get on the tour, you don't want you don't even want him in your house. So Ricky is really getting the different style of mothering that he wasn't getting with um that he wasn't getting with Blanca. So he's really starting to see the whole situation. So we saw all that go down. But then um also um but before all of that went down, um, you know, after Blanca and um, Damon had the conversation about Ricky, she pretty much tells him, you need to go talk to Helena. And he's like, well, why? She says that because Helena really went through a lot to put you in this school and you got one semester left before you graduate. So if, Hel so if, so if Helena says you, that, that you can't go, you're not going. You're going to finish school. So go to her and see what she has to say. So we see that, you know, in class, Damien is a star student. He's usually the one doing the demonstrations when it comes down to the um, to the dance numbers. So Damien is now a senior dancer. And we definitely saw on last season, even though he was a he was like a freshman, he was dancing with some of the senior performances. So Damien is one of a kind. So afterwards, he after class, he decides to take Helena out for coffee and he lets her know that he got on the Blonde Ambition tour and he really wants to go and he's sighted. And Helena was like, well, it seemed to me that you made up your mind. Well, she lets it be known that, look, um, in my last semester, um, you know, the creator of the new school, he wanted me to go out and show my talent to the world where my dance teacher was dead set against it. But... He wanted me to be seen by the world, you know, to see this blossoming black girl performing in these white concert halls and theaters. And he wanted me to get my time to shine and wanted people to see me. This is your time, Damon, and I don't want to hold you back. I want you to go out and I want you to get these experiences. And she was saying that you're no longer a student anymore. You're now a teacher. So go out here and learn the and learn your you know have these experiences and become the best that you can be because you got it. But then she lets him know that promise me that after this tour you're gonna come back and get your diploma. You know you're gonna that you're gonna graduate and he promises her. And we see that you know Helena is kind of overcome with emotion because she's literally developed like somewhat of a mother relationship with him just like Blanca has. So. It was really cool to see that she, you know, gave gave him her blessing. And we see that, yeah, Damon looked good after that makeover. And so did Ricky. So they both are ready. So we actually see um, that, you know, both, as I said, both of them got are getting different teachings from their houses. But on the day of the audition, Damien and Ricky actually meet. And you would immediately think with all the stuff they're getting, there's going to be hostility. There's nothing but sportsmanship and true respect for each other. Because let's be real, if it wasn't for Damien, Ricky wouldn't be where he is right now. Because Damien was the one who convinced him to audition for that um, I'll Be Sure tour and gave him the confidence to live his dreams. So, 
he has a respect for Damon, and Damon definitely has respect for him, and they're just, they have, you know, we can definitely see that that friendship is still there, even though they broke up. And they both killed their audition, and there's this one guy that was there who was really a damn good dancer, so he was definitely the one to beat. Um, and they pretty much tell each other good luck and everything. Um, then they're supposed to, you know, wait for the call to see whether they got in or not. Um, we see at the house of Wintour, Ricky gets the call and he gets a call back. So he's excited. He goes to hug Electra and Electra was like, what the fuck? Get off me, bitch. <laughs> Electra's a damn mess. And then we see that Damon gets a call as well. And Damon looks sad, and immediately Blanca's like, oh, Damon. And he's like, I got a call back. And they were ecstatic, you know, they they hug each other, they're screaming and everything. So, and pretty much, um, you know, Blanca's like, wow, Madonna, you know, the ballroom scene, you're going to go and you're going to influence popular culture. And it was a really beautiful moment because that's also what Willie Ninja did. You know, Willie Ninja literally became a global phenomenon after Paris is Burning. And he did become a, um, a cultural phenomenon, you know, after, after appearing on Paris is Burning. So this was a beautiful moment. And, you know, rest in peace to Willie Ninja. But, yeah, this was, this was awesome. So... Then I'm going to talk about this because um, let's just say there have been a few debates as to did things really go down between Chris and Ricky. You know, when Chris, you know, showed his ass at that club and called himself, you know, telling Damon that he was fucking Ricky and all of that. Well, we got a confirmation that that shit was true because here it is. Ricky is over Chris's apartment. He's practicing and everything, and Chris is trying to get him some good dick, you know, trying to get a quickie or whatever. And he's pretty much, you know, saying that, look, I'm trying to really focus on this Butch Queen Vogue Femme category because it's stiff. And, you know, and like pretty much, you know, I, I can't do nothing right now. He's like, man, just just screw that and just get in bed with me, you know, let's get it in. And he's like, look, I'm trying to reserve my energy you know, and he's like, really? He's like, come on, man. You ain't never walked a house and you never been a part of a house, so you wouldn't understand. And he, and then Chris was like, well, that's because I'm independent, unlike you. And, they, and Rick was like, Ricky was like, excuse me? He's like, you're a follower. You know, you know, that bitch Electra got you around, got you, pulled you around like a dog on a leash, you know. You know, I'm a master and you're a follower and all this shit. And, and he was like, look, you need to watch your mouth. Yeah, because Electra may be a lot of things, but you're not going to talk about my mother, which I completely understand. Like, show some respect. And he pretty much says, won't you grow a balls? Won't you grow a pair of balls for a change? You know, and then finally it dawned on Ricky. He's like, you know what? It was a mistake messing up things with Damon over your ass. You know, and he was like, then won't you go back to his ass then? He was like, he believed in my dreams, but you ain't nothing but a tired, self-centered bitch with your toxic ass energy. I was like, oh shit. Like, now you finally getting it that you had a good thing, but probably, you know, you was... You was like liking you was liking Chris because Chris was giving you some good ass while while you was on tour and shit and it was kind of like a 80-20 situation. You left the situation thinking you was getting well actually Damon broke up with you, but the, but the thing is you thought you was going to get something better with Chris and you see that Chris ain't even half the man that Damon is. And and then, all of a sudden, you know, Chris fires back like, you know what? I want a happy life, and I don't need you to pollute me with all of your negative energy. And and he was like, oh, you, and then like Ricky was like, you want saying that shit when you had your legs on my shoulders the other night? And I was like, yep, that's exactly what it was. So, yes, it has been confirmed. Yes, Ricky and, and Chris was getting it in. And, yes, he was guilty 
of of cheating on Damon. And and then all of a sudden he was like, first of all, you know, first of all, Ricky, you will need a map to find my G spot, so you really ain't all that good. And then Ricky pretty much told him, if you learn to swallow your pride like you swallow men, you maybe your ass wouldn't be alone. I'm done with this shit. And he runs out. I was like, damn. So him and Chris are over. And now it's the um, the night of the ball where both, you know, this is, so both Ricky and Damon are going to compete in the, in the Vogue category before they go to their callback the next day. And Electra is meeting with the House of Wintour. Ricky's not there. And she said, and she's pretty much saying that we got to ensure Ricky's victory. So... All of a sudden, and she says, and also, this is the last time, you know, before he gets his, before he um, re-auditions for his, for, um, for his, um, for the audition with Madonna, and before she becomes my new best friend. And I'm like, <laughs> she is just living in a complete delusion. And, <clears throat> and then the old girl was looking at her like, really, bitch? You gonna take my shit? I'm like, yeah, that's what that's what ele- that's what she does. She did it to Blanca all the time. She'll take an idea and make it hers. And and then all of a sudden she said that, but while all of this was happening, something came to me. WWCD. What would Candy do? And she says that Candy wasn't a thinker, and she never had the strategy to really focus on a problem. But she took action, and then she pulls out Candy's infamous hammer, and she says, and what I want you to do is I want you to use it. Boom! And she says, I want you to destroy Damon's foot, and, you know, so therefore that Ricky can win. And most of the members of the house are dancing against it, especially Lamar and Cubby, because Cubby was like, why don't you do it? And she was like, excuse me? Mother never gets her hands dirty. So, I'm going to leave this here. And whoever decides to pick up this hammer and handle this gets to go with me to Madonna's birthday party. I'm like, you self-righteous bitch. Like, you are that gung-ho to win that you want to injure Damon in order to ensure that Ricky's going to win? Like, just crazy. But we definitely see that Lamar and Cubby are not here for it because even though they with them, you know, they got history with Damon and they was like, shit. And Lamar was like, uh, we don't need to do all that. You know, Ricky can win on his own. But yeah, Electra's on some bullshit completely. So we are now, you know, at the ball. Pray tell is announcing, you know, Madonna's Vogue is number one on the, is number one on the charts. Um... And pretty much um, the category is runway black and white cinema. So they're pretty much serving it. And then we see that um, Poppy and, An- and um, Angel get Blanca. And say, like, look, Blanca, we got, a, you, we got a situation. Let's go. They go in the back and they talk to Lamar. And Lamar spills the tea on the whole situation. And, she, and um, he was saying that, look. You know, I know I would normally do this, but that bitch Electra is going way too far. But yeah, she wants us to injure Damon's foot so that Ricky could win. And then, you know, Poppy is like telling, yeah, and he's doing this and they doing that. And then Lamar was like, hello, bitch. Why am I here if you're going to tell the whole damn story? <laughs> I was like, and then Poppy's like, my bad. <laughs> I thought that was funny. And then she was saying that, yeah. Um, she wanted us to um, take a hammer and injure, you know, Damon's foot so that he can compete and Ricky will would, would be a shoe-in for the, um, for the category. And Blanca was like, is, is she talking about Candy's actual hammer? And Lamar was like, yeah. And she's like, oh, hell nah. So we see that Blanca confronts Electra and she was like, I already know you doing this shit because I know how you move. But I'm letting you know you better call you better call this shit off. And then Electra's like, "Oh, Blanca, darling, 
I have no idea what you're talking about. Blanca pretty much stepped over to her. She's like, look, anything happens to my child, I will kill you. And she's like, but come on, darling. You know, I'm not trying to hobble him for life. Wounds heal. There'll be other opportunities for him. She's like, and then like Blanca really gives her the read of her life. And she's like, do you realize that this situation is not just about Ricky or Damon? They're standing for all of us. Yeah, you may be seven feet tall and you may um, be hobbling with Glitterati, but nobody sees you, bitch. You know, they don't see any of us. Not, not until this moment. You know, when they shine, the light that they radiate is going to shine on all of us. So, regardless of what you may think, bitch, you're one of us. And if either one of them shine, that light is going to reflect on you. So, call off your damn dogs and give me the damn hammer. And we see that old girl, I think her name was Milan, she the one that had the hammer. Because, remember, she said that she had this dream that her and Madonna were best friends. So, she wanted to have that, that moment with Madonna. So, she was good. She was the one that was going to actually injure Damon. So, she pulls out the hammer and gives it to her. And then... <laughs> And then, like, we see that, uh, that, um, Electra was like, Oh, here you go, ruling my plans, you mongrel. But then you see that she kind of smiles at Blanca, because it's like, that mother and daughter love is still there. And she knows that Blanca is that one that can really challenge her in a way that none of the other daughters can. So, you know, that was cool. <clears throat> So then we also get a scene between Poppy and Angel. You know, Poppy's been working double shifts. You know, um, we see this girl tried to come at him. And we see that Angel got a little jealous. Um, but then we see that Poppy turns her down. And he was like, hey, looking don't cost you nothing, honey. You know, um, but then she um, told him that, you know, she's been booked with four models. She's got another campaign with... Um, with uh what's her name um with wet and wild and everything and they pretty much have a moment and he was like yeah you looking good girl and he says that then she says that i might get a um i might be a shoe in for an essence cover and he was saying that yeah so after you get that we need to make a rain check on that dinner and you can just see that yeah he still got eyes for angel and we see that Angel definitely is feeling him. So we're going to see how that's going to play out. But I'm really rooting for them. But because they're in totally separate worlds, that may be a complication. But um, so now the category has come up. Butch Queen Vogue Femme. And we see that this is the category where Damien and Ricky duke it out. You know, um, Damien does his thing. And then Ricky does his. And I would have to say, Ricky did that shit. So, and Ricky was, Ricky was giving it. I mean, he started doing this shit. I was like, oh shit. Okay, Ricky, I see you, bitch. I was here for it. So, and there was another guy who, um, who was, who was also in the, who was also in the, um, category with them. Um, the first guy got his scores. You know, his scores weren't that high. But then... Damon gets tens across the board, and then they said when it came down to Ricky, we were assuming that I was assuming that Ricky was gonna get all tens too, but he got all tens, but also got a nine. So that meant that Damon won the won the um won the category. Immediately, Electra was like, "What the hell?" And then Praytel was like, "Oh, you mad girl." Well, this is an indication of where the child pays for the sins of the mother. Because pray tell is the master of ceremonies. So, don't nothing go down in that ball that he don't know about. So, Blanca didn't say shit to pray tell, but I'm pretty sure pray tell got win that Electra was going to pull a stunt on Damon for Ricky to win. So, Damon gets the trophy and everything. Electra's all mad and shit, and she's leaving. And all of a sudden, Pretty was like, "Oh, you mad? You leaving? Get the fuck out of here, bitch!" I was dying. 
say it. I was like, pray tell is the motherfucking man, y'all. I don't give no fucks. That shit had me rolling. I'm like, he literally let her ass have it. So then we see that, you know, we get a scene that um, Ricky is drunk because he lost in the category. And we see that, um, and also what's playing in the background is Millie Vanilli, Girl, I'm Gonna Miss You, which used to be my jam. And this is so unfortunate what happened with Millie Vanilli, if you know the story. But yet the, the music's timeless, though. But uh, here it is. Ricky's drunk as shit. And he tries to pick up on a guy at the bar. And he's like, hey, you know, hmm. I know you've been eyeing me. Well, let's go out. Let, let's go out and let's, you know, have a good time and all that. And then the dude was like, but didn't you just break up with Damon? But he's like, yeah, that's old news. I'm into you right now. Let's go. And then the dude was like, uh, I not here for that and you just saw him kind of like slither and move away the actor who played that role did a damn good job because i was rolling because he was just like oh no and he just slithered this fuck away against ricky because ricky drunk as shit and again it just goes to show ricky's a whore because here it is you just looking for something to put your dick in and Damon called it. Damon's like, dang, it seemed to me you kind of losing your game. And and then, like, you know, him and Ricky have a moment. And he pretty, Damon pretty much says that, look, you know, I really want to give this trophy to you because you really deserve it. You were good, you know. And he says that, look, you're going to get on this tour, Ricky. You got this. And we definitely see that, you know, Ricky still has a place in his heart for Damon. But due to the fact that Ricky's a whore, he can't stop fooling around, obviously. Because here it is, he was just trying to push up on old boy. But then he tells Damon, um, I broke up with Chris. And Damon was like, I'm sorry to hear that. But we see that Damon still has a place in his heart for Ricky too. But, you know, Damon right now I think is being real smart. And he's not giving into that because he's saying that, look... You can't really give me the relationship that I want. And here it is. He trying to push up on Damon. Damon's like, nah, you know, I ain't here for that. You know, and it's clearly that Ricky wants him back. And, you know, Damon gets the trophy and he leaves. And we see that Ricky is literally in his feelings. But I'm like, Ricky, you fucked up, bro. What you think was going to happen? So then the next day, they both go back because they both got callbacks. They didn't get on the tour, um, you know, for Madonna. And the guy that they were eyeing, he got the tour. And they said, congratulations. He kind of just gives them a look and keeps it moving. And it was like, okay. <laughs> I mean, so, but then before they was about to walk away, the lady that, um, that, um, that pretty much scouted both of them comes out. And she's like, look, I'm sorry that you guys didn't get the Madonna opportunity. You know, that happens. But... There's another opportunity, you know, for they're trying to re they're trying to reboot Solid Gold, and they want you guys to audition for it. So they see that, um, so pretty much they the guy who's gonna reboot it meets up with both of them, and he pretty much says that you know, um, and you can definitely tell the chemistry is still there between Damon and Ricky's I mentioned before, you know, as far as their friendship and their connection. Um, they meet with a guy. He says that, you know, Solid Gold really made stars out of a lot of people. And I love Solid Gold. I was a Solid Gold fan. Like, in the early 80s, I used to watch Solid Gold and you would dance along and sing to all the celebrities and stuff. And I love the dances because the dances were everything. I mean, the 80s was the shit. <laughs> um... And he started mentioning that, you know, this is where Arsenio Hall got discovered and Lucinda Dickey. Um, if y'all actually watched the Breaking movie, she's the one that played Kelly. You know, she got her start on Solid Gold as well. You know, because Solid Gold came out in the 70s. And due to the um, advent of, you know, music videos taking over the airwaves, it pretty much, you know, took Solid Gold off the air. But Solid Gold was timeless, you know, it... Um, it had, you know, it was hosted by, you know, Merlin McCoo, Andy Gibb, Dionne Warwick, 
um, Rex Smith, and even David Hasselhoff. So it was like the show where all the celebrities would come on, they would lip sync to their songs, and you would have the solid gold dancers that would dance behind them. And then they would have the countdown. So therefore, we see that they're going to reboot Solid Gold and they hired both um, Ricky and um, Damon to be the dancers. The original um, Solid Gold had 10, but it's only the two of them and a, and a girl. So it's only three dancers for this reboot. And they do the countdown. They start playing some of my songs like Perfect Gentleman's Ooh La La, you know, MC Hammer, Sinead O'Connor, uh, Bell Biv DeVoe, Janet Jackson's, you know, All Right, um, Wilson Phillips, Hold On For One More Day, and then number one is Vogue. So, we see that um, afterwards, they have a good moment, they talk to the girl, she's become friends with them, and, you know, he said, I had the best time with you today, Ricky was saying this, and he's like, I don't want it to end. And pretty much, uh, Damon was like, look, we have come so far, you know, where we're literally becoming icons, you know, for our community, and we can't let nothing get in the way of it, you know. So, pretty much, um, Damon um, extends his hand for friendship. And at first, you see that Ricky is all in his feelings because he wants more, but Damon has gotten to this point where he ain't for the bullshit. So, but Ricky finally agrees, okay, fine, you know, as friends, you know, we'll, we'll be friends. And they go their separate ways. So I'm like, I'm glad that Damon has literally take, took in control over the situation. Because it's obvious he still has feelings for Ricky, but he can't allow himself to get his heart broken again. And we definitely see that Ricky is still being a whore. And, you know... Where it's interesting, it's it's gonna be interesting to see where things are gonna play out between Damon and Ricky down the line. So definitely that went down, and they ended the and they ended the episode with this great quote, and the quote was, "I am trying to show the world that we are all human beings, and that color is not important. What is important is the quality of the work." And that was a quote by none other than the legend himself, Alvin Ailey, who passed away from AIDS in 1989. So, this was a great episode, y'all. I enjoyed it. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about it. But yes, this episode was everything. So, um, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, subscribe to my new channel in the description box, um, Real Tea, Real Talk. Um, Definitely subscribe to that channel and also follow all of my descriptions in the um, in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I'll be back with the next episode of Pose. So until next time, everybody, take care.